Good evening. My name is Christy Robinia, and I am the Associate Dean Director for the NMU School of Nursing. This evening, on behalf of Northern Michigan University President Fritz Erickson, Provost Kara Schuling, Dean Dale Kapla, and the School of Nursing faculty and staff, I would like to welcome all of you to this virtual celebration of our BSN graduates. A determined virus has derailed all of our plans and intentions. Of course, we would much rather be celebrating this tremendous milestone in person. However, I am so glad you are all here to mark this achievement in ceremony. Elizabeth Gilbert wrote, Ceremony is essential to humans. It is a circle that we draw around important events to separate the momentous from the ordinary. And ritual is a sort of magical safety harness that guides us from one stage of our life to another, making sure that we don't stumble or lose ourselves along the way. Under normal circumstances, nurses mark the end of the rigorous passage through theory and clinical courses that students must complete with a pinning ceremony, which includes the symbolic pinning of a student nurse by a nurse. Pinning symbolizes that these students have successfully passed each hurdle to be worthy of a membership into the proud and loyal society of the profession of nursing. Although we cannot be together for the physical act of pinning, tonight the ritual will be completed through words and pictures. Graduating from college is a momentous stage in anyone's life. And even in pre-pandemic times, graduating from nursing school adds a level of anticipation that is best described as feeling a mixture of excitement laced with healthy fear. The, <clears throat> these graduates will leave the safety nest of instructor guidance and preceptor oversight into employment arenas that are currently stressed under the strain of COVID-19. What we tell them tonight is, you have proven your abilities. Yes, you are worthy of this profession. Yes, there will be challenges, but you all have the skill set to overcome those hurdles. The first year of nursing might be tough, but manageable with the right mindset. Alice Bryant recommended that first year nurses chill out and just listen and pace yourself, be thorough, communicate. So keep looking until you find good mentors, never stop learning and take care of yourselves physically, mentally, emotionally, and never forget you did earn this. You are smart enough, and more importantly, you have the heart needed for the work of helping others heal physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Never forget that. Now, I would like to acknowledge all the friends and family who are listening. Thank you all so much. Thank you for supporting these students, for being there with encouragement and comfort, for providing the necessary foundation that allowed them to endure and to build resiliency. There are patients and families that really desperately need them, and you are no small part of their current achievements and future successes. I would also like to acknowledge those that mentored and assisted these graduates, all of the nurses who encountered them along their educational journey, and even the crabby ones. You learned a lot from all of them. Thank you to the nursing faculty. Thank you to Mike Strahan, librarian extraordinaire. Thank you to simulation specialist, Julie Dobson. And finally, thank you to our support staff, Tina Bulio and Luann Thurston. Now I have the honor of introducing the student's choice of graduation speaker, Professor Nancy Moss. Professor Mass holds a Master's of Science degree and certification as a family nurse practitioner. 
She brings years of experience in the fields of medical, surgical, and intensive care nursing to her position. She is noted for her talent in helping students understand the complexities of pathophysiology and has helped our School of Nursing develop and thread simulation experiences throughout our curriculum. Nancy has a reputation of expecting rigor and yet being excruciatingly fair. Students often tell me that she frightens them in the beginning. She has stern rules and sometimes a stern face. And yet they quickly learn that underneath all of that, she has a marshmallow caring heart. You all know that about her now, don't you? I am not surprised that she was asked by all of you to speak tonight. So here's to Nancy. Well, what a wonderful introduction that was. And I'll, I'll try not to have too stern a face tonight as I go forward here. So anyways, it was an honor to speak to you today, or it is an honor, excuse me. And one thing I absolutely love about speaking at Pinning is that it kind of is full, full circle to me. Um, I am one of the first people you meet in the nursing program in your first week, sometimes at 8.30 on Monday morning, bright and early, correct? And now years later, I get to participate at the end of your journey in nursing school by saying congratulations and welcome to this profession. It has been wonderful to watch you grow from being anxious at your first week of exams and those first simulations where you had to transfer either Julie Dobson or myself out of bed into a wheelchair. Remember those days? To now, when in clinicals and in simulations, you demonstrate confidence and skills and nursing knowledge, and you are prepared to enter the career of nursing. You have survived a lot throughout nursing school especially as we have had to navigate it during a worldwide pandemic. Remember that nurses are strong and we are resilient. We encounter a situation and we figure out how to handle it to the best of our ability. You have excelled at this through nursing school and also it will work for you as a nurse. That said, being strong and resilient, well, sometimes it's a little terrifying and it's also a little stressful, right? So is working long hours. So remember to take care of yourselves. Engage in some self-care on a regular basis, and everyone is different in what they might choose to do, correct? Like for me, you know what I'm going to do this weekend, right? I'm going to get on my bike and ride. So with that, though, remember to do it on a regular basis because it will support your soul and your body and your mind. And you will be a better nurse if you come from a solid place right here. The faculty here at the NMU School of Nursing have done their best to prepare you for your entrance into your first jobs as nurses. But know that you will probably learn about as much as you did in nursing school in, again in the first one or two years of working as a nurse. And during this time, there may be times when you feel uncertain of what to do next in patient care. And I would guess to tell you that Probably every nurse who is watching this right now will tell you that they've had similar feelings sometimes during their career as a nurse. My point is this, if you feel uncertain about a certain assessment or intervention that um, you're not sure you should do, ask those questions. Take a minute to look things up and get help from your coworkers or mentors where you work. Make that effort to form a good knowledge base and to keep on learning. Form a good team of support. Be supportive of other people and um, also ask for help when needed. If your team works together in patient care, you will likely increase the quality and safety of the nursing care you give. It may also help you to grow as a nurse and you may develop really good friendships along the way as well. Lastly, it was a true pleasure to be your professor during the program. And I have just watched your excited faces as I discuss the finer points of fluid and electrolytes and acid-based disorders. But in all seriousness, you are a kind and compassionate group of people, and I will really miss you as students, but I look forward to working with you as colleagues. My blessings to each of you and congratulations. I always knew you could do it. Thank you.
We now have some faculty members who would like to share some memories that they have with the graduating class of 2020. So I'll invite Carrie Jacobson up here. Hello. <clears throat> As Katie said, my name is Carrie Jacobson and I am one of the instructors here um, at Northern. And I had the pleasure of having almost all of you in Med Surge One and watching how you have grown as students, as people, as soon to be nurses. Um, so, and then I was fortunate enough to have you again in Med Surge Two, um, some of you in clinic and then some of you in issues again this semester. So I feel like I really got to know a lot of you. Um, it was interesting because I looked at my roster and out of your entire class, there were only five of you that I didn't have in Med Surge One. So like I said, I've, I've got to know you um, pretty well. Um, I have a slight confession to make. So on my calendar, I had the date completely wrong and I had text Katie Taylor and said, is pinning tonight because I haven't gotten any updates about it. And she was like, no, it's in like three weeks. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, I'm really glad I checked before I showed up because it was a nice day out. I was going to wear flip flops. And I was like, who wears flip flops in Michigan in November? But <laughs> But fortunately, um, I corrected or she corrected me before I came here. So my point is, is that as you go along, uh, you are going to make mistakes. And the big thing is acknowledge them, learn from them. Uh, hopefully they're not too big of mistakes and kind of move on. So that's sort of my advice for you going forward. Um, Having had so many of you, I do have some memories that I would like to share. So I want to play a little trivia game here. Um, so if you think that I'm talking about you, you can unmute your mic and maybe you want to claim it. Maybe you don't. But um, Back in Med Surge 1, I had uh, a student who was, was on their off rotation with respiratory therapy. And I happened to be walking by and the RT came out and grabbed me out of the hallway and said, can you please come look at this patient? Something's going on. And I'm not quite sure what, what it is, but we need, we need another opinion in here. And, and the RT had a student with him. So we went in and the patient was deteriorating. Um, we did eventually call a rapid response and the patient quickly got transferred to ICU and the, the poor student, I'm not really sure what they were thinking, but it was either taking it all in a little bit scared, hopefully learning a lot. Um, but I just remember that and then watching how far you all have come. So does anybody remember who that might be or anybody want to claim who that might be? <laughs> yep, Wyatt gave me a thumbs up. <laughs> um, so this semester, uh, like I said, I spent a lot of time with several of you. Uh, I had one student in clinic who had several patients who requested that the student come back and visit with them because they thought that the student was, was me, absolutely Carrie. fantastic and just adored the student. Um, does anybody want to claim that one? Okay, I'm calling you out, Larry. <laughs> there were <laughs> there were several um, geriatric patients who really kind of fell in love with Larry and they mentioned to the nurses, if you see that nice young man, if you would have him come back and he said, I'll have to make the rounds and go say hi to everybody. So, so it was really great to get feedback like that about students. Um, the next one, uh, does anybody have a nickname of Spike? No, nobody's claiming it. So, while we were in simulation this past semester, I was telling a story about a family member of mine who had a very rare kind of stroke, and I just got done having this conversation, and the next group came in, and at the end, this student started to share a story, and I was looking at Julie, and I said, man, this sounds so familiar because it's such a rare thing to have, 
And come to find out, Paige is actually neighbors with my family. And so I found out that she has a nickname of Spike. So I thought I would share that with you all. <laughs> um, this semester, uh, we also spent uh, some time at the hospital together. Uh, we were sharing where we were all from. And some of you are from small little towns. Some of you are from bigger towns. And one student shared that they were from a very small town um, called Iron River. And she looked at me and she goes, it's actually in the UP if you didn't know. And I kind of laughed because I said, well, I'm also from a small town in the UP. And when I told her I was from Felt, she then proceeded to make fun of me, which is okay because I get that a lot. Uh, <laughs> so does anybody want to claim this one? Mm. I know I can't see you all, but Liz, if you're out there, it's okay, we're both from small towns in the UP. Um, just a few more. So my part-time job, in addition to working here at Northern, is I do flight nursing. And recently, I went to a hospital to pick up a patient and was pleasantly surprised to find out that I was going to get report from one of you all. And I was excited to, to be on the other end and, and actually hear information and, and see what you all had learned. So it was really exciting to kind of be on the other end of it. Any takers? Well, this was Barbie. Um, so it was really great while you were in transitions to, again, to see how far you have all come. Uh, where are my night clinic group? <laughs> so you all were kind of the guinea pigs. This was the first time that we had done a night clinic. And I was really excited because I am a nighttime person. You are all aware that I don't like mornings. 9 a.m. is early for me. So I was really excited when you all were excited to come and join me on the dark side. Um, and it worked out really well. It did go great. And we're going to, again, do it next semester. So I thank you for being brave and coming to the night shift and hanging out and getting to learn a lot. And those are all, well, not all, but those are some of my memories that I thought of while thinking about you all and again, just how far you have come. Um, I think you should really, really be proud of not only completing nursing school, but completing nursing school in a pandemic, because there's not a lot of people out there who can say that. Um, I've talked to students who have said that their master's programs were harder than the BSN nursing program. So again, you should just all be very, very proud. We are all proud of you. We congratulate you and we hope that, you know, you come back and tell us your stories and communicate with us and let us know how things are going. So congratulations. And Michelle, are you wanting to speak next? Sure, I'll say a few words. There we go. I'd like to congratulate this class for being so flexible. We started this semester uh, throwing you all into clinic right away and uh, being flexible and trying to get things completed with the coursework so we could keep you in the hospital as, as long as we could. And then being resilient for the um, other staff. You know, we all wore our masks, we all wore our shields and we got teased a lot um, and we got, we got laughed at a lot because our face shield says face shield on it, but <laughs> you were all very determined to stay um, involved and engaged. And then when we hit transitions, we finally had some um, leeway there, but uh, many of you, not many, but at least a quarter of you had some time out. You had uh, we had to wait because we were exposed to a COVID patient or we had to wait because we were, um, we might have been gotten sick or whatever. So, and you just kept on and you made sure you finished up your clinic and you stayed strong. And I'm really proud of you. This was a tough semester. Not only was it a tough semester for you to finish up, but it was not a good semester for me to have to say goodbye to nursing students because it was hard. It's hard to say that, but it was a good class. And I appreciate you putting up with all of it. 
And I'm looking forward to seeing you. And I hope I don't see you, me lying in a bed and you taking care of me because that's not where I want to be. But I look forward to seeing you and practicing and practice. So thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Katie Taylor. For those of you who don't know me, I'm an instructor with the School of Nursing, and it is my privilege to now present to you the graduating class of 2020 from the NMU's BSN program. Haley Marie Anderson, daughter of Tom and Lisa Anderson, Michigan Merit Award recipient. Larry Burnett, being pinned by Sandra Spoolstra, son of Nancy and Larry Burnett. Olivia Ashton Cobb, being pinned by Sierra King, daughter of Mark and Cassie Cobb, Michigan Merit Award recipient. Wyatt Cornett, being pinned by Katie Alderink, son of Robert and Kimberly Cornett. Alyssa Eland, being pinned by Cindy Eland, daughter of Dave and Cindy Eland, Michigan Merit Award recipient. Patricia Ferraro, being pinned by Judith Ferraro, daughter of Judith and Christopher Ferraro, Michigan Merit Award recipient. Kelsey Geyer, being pinned by Paul and Michelle Geyer, daughter of Paul and Michelle Geyer. Catherine Godfrey, being pinned by Judy and Larry Fladung, daughter of Judy and Larry Fladung, wife of Justin Godfrey. Megan Gustafson, being pinned by Linda OG, daughter of Todd and Maya OG, wife of Jacob Gustafson. Michaela Hinkson, being pinned by Ann Taylor, daughter of Mike and Mary Hinkson, Michigan Merit Award recipient. Anne Marie Houston, being pinned by Linda Houston, daughter of Linda and Gary Houston, Michigan Merit Award recipient. Jody Lynn Genoviak, being pinned by Jeff and Heather Genoviak, daughter of Jeff and Heather Genoviak. Rachel Momquist, being pinned by Steve McDermott, daughter of Eric and Michelle Momquist. Madison Meckling, being pinned by Lois Brow and Robin Burke, daughter of Robin and Steve Burke, Michigan Merit Award recipient. Allie Nagy, being pinned by Cindy Oley, daughter of Cindy and Randy Oley and Jeff Nagy, Michigan Merit Award recipient. Emily O'Leary, being pinned by Ann O'Leary, daughter of Ann and Marty O'Leary, Michigan Merit Award recipient. Elizabeth Pleaser, being pinned by Morgan Badgero, daughter of David and Joy Pleaser. Danny Marie Perot, being pinned by Karen Perot, daughter of Rodney and Karen Perot, granddaughter of Claude and Marlene Cotts, fiance of Mike Hollenbeck, Michigan Merit Award recipient. Abigail Lexi Peterson, being pinned by Chris and Tammy Peterson, daughter of Chris and Tammy Peterson, Michigan Merit Award recipient. Laura Petrie, being pinned by Barb Petrie, daughter of Barb and Roger Petrie. Regan Shane Schumacher, being pinned by Dr. Jennifer Hall, daughter of Dr. Jennifer Hall and Eric Hall. Paige Ann Schwartz, being pinned by Terry Durley, daughter of Andy and Robin Schwartz, Michigan Merit Award recipient. Jesse Siminski, daughter of Stanley and Corinne Siminski, wife of Robert Gold, Michigan Merit Award recipient. 
Barbie Jo Slagle being pinned by Cindy Trevelyan, daughter of Tom and Tammy Slagle, Michigan Merit Award recipient. Catherine Mary Slavin being pinned by Patricia Slavin, daughter of Brian and Patricia Slavin. Megan Nicole Stasevich being pinned by Brian Stasevich, daughter of Matt and Tanya Johnson, wife of Brian Stasevich, Michigan Merit Award recipient. Michaela Marie Stoner being pinned by Mary Jo Boss, daughter of Tom and Kim Stoner. Lynn Torrance being pinned by Lois Erse Palmer, daughter of Dan Erse Palmer and Mary Harris, wife of Nathan Torrance, mother of Taylor Torrance, Michigan Merit Award recipient. Rachel Wiley being pinned by Jill Wiley, daughter of Christopher and Jill Wiley, fiance of Drew Siegel, Michigan Merit Award recipient. It is now my honor to present the Clinical Excellence Award. This award is given based upon faculty recognition of the student performance in meeting the clinical course objectives consistently and independently, functioning above the level expected, and demonstrating outstanding leadership and nursing judgment throughout the nursing curriculum. This year's recipients of the Clinical Excellence Award are Ann Houston and Danny Perot. Congratulations to you both. I now introduce Ann Houston, who will be giving the class thank you. We would like to take a moment to express our sincere thanks to all of those who supported us through this experience. First and foremost, to our families, thank you so much for your ongoing love and encouraging words, for all of the listening ears and tears wiped away, and for all instilling all of us with the passion and drive it takes to pursue this profession. And special thanks to those of you who let us quarantine in your basements back in March. To our second family, to our cohort members, thank you for the endless study sessions, the late night snack runs, the comforting words after a hard day, the collaboration on different projects, for always being down to help with a gnarly bed bath, and for always running the numbers to figure out exactly what everyone needed to pass the exams that we were all so worried about. We made it through this together, and now we get to enjoy the best part, sitting back and watching one another succeed. Finally, Thank you to the faculty and nursing department staff for all of the incredible work you've done to make us into the compassionate, well-rounded nurses we are today. Thank you for holding our hands when you knew that we needed it and for pushing us when you knew we had what it took. Your jobs are not easy, especially when faced with such unprecedented times. You transitioned to an entirely new way of teaching with empathy and grace and relieved our anxieties because we knew you had our best interests in mind. Your ability to be transparent, flexible, and adaptable during this time made our transition as easy as it could have possibly been. This department led by example and demonstrated tremendous resilience in protecting our community and what makes it special, one another. We are fortunate to have had you as our instructors, mentors, role models, and friends. Thank you. I would now like to invite Kelsey Geyer to present the lighter side of nursing. Hello. First, I would like to say thank you to all the amazing staff and professors who not only stuck with us these last couple of years, but went above and beyond. Congratulations, cohort of 2020. We made it. After countless sleepless nights, endless anxiety, and large amounts of coffee, we reached the end. They said nursing school would be tough. It's true. These last couple years have been utterly exhausting, but also some of the most rewarding. I have a lot of good memories of my time here. Sing along in the carpool on the way to clinics, playing endless amounts of Kahoot games, 
even though I never won. Trying to create random songs in order mem to memorize my information. Being absolutely terrified my first day of clinic and late night study sessions with amazing friends. I have also learned a lot of valuable life lessons. I've learned that you can turn almost anything into a song, how to fit a four hour class, an eight hour work shift, studying, and a mental breakdown all in a single day, how to function properly with only two to three hours of sleep. Sometimes just one cup of coffee isn't enough. The phrase, fake it till you make it, is a motto to live by. A pair of good shoes can be a deal breaker. Our nursing instructors can, are the best, and sometimes binging Netflix and relaxing takes precedent. This is an amazing class, and I know that they will go on to do great things, and I just want to say thank you to everybody and that I will always remember my time here.
The class pledge will now be recited by Lynn Torrance. I pledge myself as a member of the nursing profession in the presence of this assembly to uphold the standards of my profession and to contribute to the betterment of these standards. I will use the knowledge gained in making sound nursing judgments and will be held responsible and accountable not only to myself, but to those who are entrusted to my care and under my management. So the final part of tonight's ceremony is the lighting of the candles. This commemorates the founder of modern nursing, Florence Nightingale. Florence was famous for tending wounded soldiers at night by candlelight. As a young woman from a rich family, she certainly was discouraged from putting herself in harm's way to tend to the most vulnerable. However, she ignored the protests of her family and eventually established nursing as a noble calling requiring professional diligence. These wildcat nurses have trained hard in order to stand ready 24 seven to care for all of us in our most vulnerable state. We know that Florence would be very proud of you. So thank you all for attending, all your friends and family and students. We wish you all the best. Congratulations. Please come see us when this pandemic is over. We really want to know where you landed. <laughs>